This is Philly Talk with Philly Mike. Talk sixes in the bird game, that's our life. Competition, we ain't scared, yeah, that's what we like. Win or lose, you know we showing up and we gon' fight. Uh, you see, we strive for the sky every day that go by. And every single week we scream and fly, eagles fly. This is Philly Talk with Philly Mike. Yeah, this is Philly Talk with Philly Mike. Yeah. What is going on, everybody? I go by Philly Mike, and this is the Philly Talk Podcast, and today we got a special guest, but before we do that, if you are new to the channel, hit the subscribe button, hit that like button for your boy, greatly appreciated, and turn on post notifications. How you doing, Dave? Philly Mike, I'm excited, man. I mean, the Eagles are back in the playoffs. Like, uh, we've talked throughout the year, and ups and downs, well, really downs and ups. And uh, I mean, you, you tell me, did you expect the Eagles to be in the postseason? Um, I actually predicted a nine and eight record when it was like, I'm talking July, August, like as soon as the uh, uh, schedule dropped. And, and you it have was that fun- on the record, right? You have that on the record. You did it. I have okay. that on the record. I was, I was right. able to, when, before the Dallas game, win or loss, I went back and, you know, screen recorded it, threw it up on Twitter, just let everybody know uh, for good or bad. And it was funny. I even said, uh, barring us getting Steven Nelson or doing some more moves because it was prior to Steven Nelson. I said, uh, you know, nine and eight. Uh, and we got there. I didn't think play also be in reach with that, depending on what happens. But here we are, we're going against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Um, what is the initial energy like in the building from coach and staff to players? How, how has it been this whole week? Well, obviously at the moment I'm not in the building, but I have been in the building and I will be in the building throughout the day here post noon. Um, it's pretty great. Uh, it's, it's, it's kind of, there's kind of different stages, you know? Um, so the first jolt of energy you get is when everybody reports back in April, because they're gone for a long time or May, whenever the off season program begins. Um, then it really ramps up again when training camp starts. And then when the cuts are made to 53 players, then you get everybody in the building this regular season time, it's ready to go. Then when you get back from a bye week there's more energy. Then this level of energy is something completely different because there's such an urgency now. You know that the stakes are you win or your season's over. So it's a really galvanizing moment where everyone in the building is it's just us and everybody out there is is out there. So like it's great. And there's enough players who have been through the playoffs that they know how to expect this moment. They know how to feel about this moment. And then you've got a young coaching staff. They've been in the playoffs as coaches, but Nick has never been in the playoffs as a head coach. So it's great energy. It's very positive energy. It's also um, uh, very much kind of like, you know, everybody's got a sense of purpose, understanding that the Eagles open the playoffs against the defending Super Bowl champions and the greatest quarterback of all time. And it's going to take everybody preparing to a T, taking no shortcuts throughout the week to play a great game on Sunday. Yeah. um, We heard the news that uh, Josh Sweat uh, had a little illness. Uh, Do you have any any information on that? You think he'll be good to go uh, come Sunday at 1 o'clock? Yeah, I mean, the hope is that he's going to be good to go. We'll find out a little bit more later on Thursday and Friday. Um, But, yeah, we all – I mean, Josh Sweat's a huge part – of this defense, but I think there's optimism that he's going to be okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so uh, speaking on expectations, um, just down the stretch, being around the guys, being around Nick, knowing that we were flirting with the seven seed, what is Minnesota doing? Uh, can we finish our uh, food per se down the stretch with the uh, NFC East uh, division that we went against? Um they didn't lack no confidence, right? Do you believe the players thought that they, they were going to get in? And once they knew they controlled their destiny, they felt good about everything? I mean, honestly, Mike, like these professional athletes, they do not <laughs> lack for confidence ever, whether they've got five wins or whether they've got nine wins or 14 wins. So there's always a great deal of confidence. But I think the fact that the Eagles knew that they could run the football, that they had a really strong offensive line, that Jalen Hurts was developing – that Devontae was a, a, a weapon that, look, I'm not sure anybody can cover him. The defense was getting better and better. And the, there were some, you know, there were some little wrinkles thrown into the plan. The schedule got a lot weirder when the NFL moved the Washington game to from Sunday to Tuesday. Uh, then they moved the Dallas game from 1 o'clock to 1 o'clock on Sunday to 
Saturday night. So everybody's schedule kind of got disrupted. But yeah, there was a ton of confidence. And I think that the consistent approach from Nick Sirianni, the leadership on the team, ultimately prevailed and kind of led the way for uh, this football team to bounce back. Mike, after a bad 2020, the Eagles bounced right back. In the, I think obviously the team would rather have been 15 and two than nine and eight, and with the number one seed resting this week. But the fact that they were able to take, for the most part, a bye week last week, I think will really help the Eagles on Sunday. Yeah. Um, real quick before we get in some of the matchups, what's the word on Miles Sanders? Uh, I know uh, he's questionable. Uh, do you th- have confidence in him being able to have a role? I know we have an abundance of backs. We've seen Boston Scott show up, Jordan Howard, Kenneth Gainwell down the stretch. Um, do you think it's going to be uh, more of a committee, or do you think Miles able to get the bulk of the carries? Because when we we did see when Miles was healthy, we favored him, and, and he got the bulk of the carries. Yeah, as, as well they should. He's explosive. He's a game breaker. He's, he's a big play running back. And there is hope that he'll play. Um, and we'll see as it goes through the week, how it goes through the week, if there's any setbacks. The key is obviously him being able to secure the football, him being able to use his hand as a blocker, catching the football, getting handoffs, securing the ball. So they are optimistic that he will play. He's been limited in practice. They'll have a full complement of running backs. But I really expect that if he's healthy and ready to go, Miles and Jordan Howard and maybe a little bit of Boston Scott will, will get the calls. And then you can kind of use Kenny moving around the formation as a pass receiver if you're able to get him into good matchups. Yeah. And so, as we all know, you know, we turned the tide in the second half of the season. The run game and the offensive line has been a staple. Um, we're going into Tampa, and it looks like, as of now, there's some weather concerns, rain, wind. Um, how big of a, a advantage do you think that plays to the Eagles if it is a muddy gritty game and, and 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 both teams got to rely on the run game a little bit more. I'm not sure there's ever an advantage when you're going against Tom Brady. So, <laughs> I mean, Tom Brady played New England and, and won what? Six Super Bowls. Yeah. So, I, I'll give you yeah. that. But the rest of the roster, you know, Tampa Bay's roster is not, you yeah, know, they, they've all played in rain. The, how many, how many rainy games have the Eagles played in this year? Right. The weather's been great. So true. Uh, look, I, first of all, Florida weather changes quickly. So the forecast, I know, is a little bit dicey. Um, but if it turns into a game where there's a bunch of mutters and you're going to slop it out and you're going to run the football 45 times, I mean, yeah, but like Tampa Bay's defense, they're fifth in the league against the run. So just because the Eagles can run the football – and it may be a rainy day, doesn't mean the Eagles are going to be able to run the ball. You're still going to have to make some plays in the pass game. I, I don't ever, like, rely on weather. Look, you're too young to remember this, but uh, the worst <laughs> loss in the history of Philadelphia sports, Mike, was 2002 season um, at Veterans Stadium, the final Eagles game at Veterans Stadium. It was supposed to be a layup for the Eagles. Oh, the weather was all in favor of the Eagles. <laughs> too cold for Tampa Bay to win. Well, Tampa Bay came in and won 27-10. So I don't really play the weather game. Both teams have to play in it. It'll come down to ball security. Tampa Bay is a plus 10 in giveaway takeaway. The Eagles are at even, zero. So, you know, that to me is one of the key metrics of this game. If you win the turnover battle, you generally win the game. So whatever whatever the weather conditions are, if the Eagles have to run the ball 40 times, 50 times, great. Just hold on to the football, be patient, and, and play ball control and play field position. But your defense is still going to have to stop Tom Brady and yep. um, and Leonard Fournette in the run game and Gronk and a good offensive line. And this is the second-ranked offense in the league, second-ranked point scorer in the league, second in red zone offense, second in third down offense, first in passing offense. So a little rain ain't going to bother Tom Brady. Yeah, I mean Tom Brady definitely has overcame some of them things, and I I I was hanging around for that that last game in Veteran Stadium. Uh, okay, but uh, definitely agree. I just think that you know, with them being you know the second rank offense, mainly due to their passing, Tom Brady, you know, on the verge of getting the MVP. It's pretty much between him and Aaron Rodgers. He has more complete, better completion percentage, more yards, um, but he does have you know the more turnovers. I just think that. You know, 
we need to do what we do best, and that's run the ball. And oh, one yeah. thing I looked about about the Buccaneers, although they're uh, top five in run defense, if you want to take a uh, tail two halves, if you just look at the last eight games, they're second worst in the NFL. And I know they faced the Colts, and Jonathan Taylor had a lot to do with it because he's had a monster of a season. But Buffalo, the you know, there's a couple games in there, Carolina twice. They're not like world beaters on the ground. So to know that the second half, now they were missing some guys and they're going to get them back. That right. they haven't been the same against the run, and just knowing that we did run over uh, number one Saints defense and a Broncos yeah. defense, and even um, a Washington defense that was pretty good against the run, means that you know sometimes when you are that good at one thing, you don't let the other team dictate what you do and whatnot. Uh, I totally agree with you. I just, I and look at the Eagles. The first time they played Tampa Bay, <clears throat> only 19 carries, but 100 yards average over five yards to carry. So I do, I agree with you that the Eagles can run the football on anybody. I'm just saying that uh, <laughs> I, I just I, I guess I'm, I go in a little bit more cautiously. Look, I, I, when the Eagles played the Saints, Saints had, the I think, the best run defense in the league at the time, and the Eagles went for over 200 on them. So I do believe this offense can run against anyone. I just kind of go – I guess I'd take a more cautious approach and go, hey, don't just count on that automatically. You're still going to have to throw the football. Yeah, definitely going to need a counter punch. And, and like you said, I, I'm not saying that the rain gives us, you know, the the sliding advantage. I just think that when you go against Tampa, you got to try to use everything uh, to your not just Tampa, Tom Brady, who uh, I think I heard today that he's like, you know, 76 percent of the playoff games he won. I mean, he's been in like 43, won like 34 or something. It's just just an outstanding career. And, uh, you know. Eagles having to go against this team in the first round is definitely a great challenge to say the least. It's going to shape this young core uh, regardless. But let me ask you, do you think in, uh, you know, the heat of the battle, guys like Landon, Jalen, and Devontae, um, who are young but do have that national championship, you know, experience, do you think, you know, it's going to be easy to keep their composure when they look in a across the field and, and they see Tom Brady on the sidelines, maybe, you know, half time it's not going exactly what they want do you think you know nick nick seriani as well yeah that's going to be the big test i mean I, I i believe that they will all be cool they've all played at the highest level jalen is always unflappable emotionally so is Devonte, and landon just plays football with <laughs> such great joy and emotion anyway um and then nick uh nick nick has shown you know what mike he's shown that he doesn't blow timeouts his game management is good. He generally challenges the right calls. Um, he doesn't. He doesn't make a lot. He, he knows when to run the two-minute drill and runs it effectively and efficiently. So I don't. I don't think they'll go out of character. But you never know, uh, because it is a bigger moment and it is it is a different kind of moment, the playoffs. Uh, but I do think that their college experience will serve them well. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I agree. Uh, this is going to be one of my biggest uh, things I want to see is how Nick Sirianni handles the fourth and shorts. I know uh, just knowing when you're playing Tom Brady, points are important, but so is getting a lead. Uh, if we just want to recall the Doug Peterson uh, versus Bill Belichick, Brady versus uh, the Eagles Super Bowl, I mean, that la that Philly Philly special, not just saying that play in general, but the 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 decision to go for it when points were, you know, as a fan, I was screaming, kick the field goal. We need to get as as, as much of a cushion. But you know, these are uh, crucial decisions against a guy like Tom Brady, who anytime he has the ball, it's dangerous. And uh definitely the best way to uh, defend him is just keep the ball out of his hands, run the clock. So I'm interested to see how we play field position and, and go for it on fourth. Um, yeah, I would expect them to be aggressive. I mean, look, the, when they played Tampa Bay earlier this year, the Bucks went on two 75-yard drives to open the game. And, you know, by halftime, by the third quarter, it was a very comfortable Tampa Bay lead. You're just not going to come back on Tom Brady because he can mm -hmm. nickel and dime you and just dink and dunk. Boom, 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 boom. The, the Bucks average, I think the number is like over 10 plays per offensive possession, which wow. means they know how to control the clock. And so if you're playing from behind and you're trying to get the football away from them, good luck. They're not going to turn the ball over and they're going to keep possession. They got that short passing game when they need to. They, I think they'll have a little bit more trouble going down the field 
missing Chris Godwin, missing and Antonio Brown, but they're always going to have Gronk. They're going to have their backs. They've got the short game. They've got a couple of good tight ends in addition to Gronk and in Brate and in OJ Howard. So to me, the Eagles have to get a lead. You have to play from in front. You have to be right there with Tampa Bay. You cannot be chasing the Bucks because I just think it's hard to do. I wish the Eagles could figure out what the New Orleans Saints do against Tom Brady and against that Tampa Bay offense. I think that they're really physical up front. That's a big part of it. New Orleans has great coverage, really excellent speed defensively. That's a key. If the Eagles could just bottle up what the Saints do, boy, would they, wouldn't that be great? To, to get a lead on Tom Brady and to turn them into a throw, throw, throw team and to, and to pressure him and to get him just a little bit off his game mentally, I mean, that's what every team wants to do. And obviously very few teams have been able to do that. Yeah, Tom Brady does get his hand, uh, the ball out of his hands quicker than anybody. I think as much as we need the Josh Sweats and the Derek Barnett to step out on the outside, the interior pass rush is what Brady fears the worst because of him being able to maneuver in the pocket. He wants to throw from a pocket. He's not afraid to climb the pocket, so Fletch and Hargrave are going to be the, the most obvious disruptors that Tom will keep his eye on. But I do want to ask you, what is your take on just this Tampa team um, – and the difference from week six, again, uh, I think Fournette had 80 rushing yards, 81 rushing yards, two touchdowns. Rojo had 20, so they ran for about 100 yards. Uh, the Eagles in the beginning of the season were were getting bled out by running backs, not so much the second half. Uh, but Leonard Fournette is coming in with a hamstring, a lingering hamstring. Uh, they both, again, Chris Godwin and A.B. out. So we've seen Brady win with any and everybody, right? But this is a different team skill set wise. When you look at the leading receiver in week six was AB. Second was Chris Godwin. Gronk and, and, and Mike Evans wasn't as much of a burden to the Philadelphia Eagles. But now they're going to be the guys. Um, to me, I just yeah. think, you know, the best game plan to try to shadow a little bit what the Saints do is let Darius Slay follow Mike Evans and try to bracket Gronk. But as you said, Tom Brady is one of them quarterbacks that will take a Scotty Miller then or a Tyler Johnson or one of these guys and turn them into something. But um, yeah, I, just, agree. Like, I, I just think, I, just, I just think the Eagles can't lay back on defense and rely on a four man passer. They've got a challenge. And I don't think it's a bad idea. Mike Evans and Darius Slay, best on best bracket Gronk. They're going to go with a uh, 12 package or a 13 package and they'll bring in Braid and they'll bring in OJ Howard. So you have to. You know, how are you going to match up against Bray? Um, How are you going to match up against the backs in the backfield? Uh, yeah, I mean, look, the, the Eagles defense has been built on don't give up the big play, keep everything in front of you, and that's wonderful. And maybe the quarterback will make a mistake. You're forcing him to mistake. But Brady's not going to make mistakes. <laughs> yeah. Now, Mike, I got to tell you, though, the Eagles, what, what was encouraging from that first game, after those first drives, and the Tampa Bay had a couple of other drives, and then they bled out the clock. But the Eagles had four three and outs. They had one interception. They had another one that could have, should have been an interception. So they did, they did a reputable job against Brady. They've got to be better this week. And with a healthier Rodney McLeod out there, you know, I just think that with TJ Edwards is a bigger part of the defense now. Everybody's on the same page defensively. They really were still getting to know each other in week six. I think the Eagles are better equipped for Tampa Bay. When they get opportunities to make an interception, you have to make the interception. And again, you've got to figure out a way to get out on three downs. You cannot let Tampa Bay just eat the clock, eat the clock, milk time, take it. Because I felt like in that first game, ultimately, and I said this after the game, Brady was the cat and the Eagles defense was the mouse. And the mouse. Brady just kept toying with the Eagles defense and could – Kind of do whatever you wanted. Yeah, um, I definitely agree there. And uh, we've seen Jonathan Gannon, although it's been against uh, lesser talent, he has been playing. He has been throwing more wrinkles, uh, just doing some deep diving. And 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 with uh, a guy that I work with on on a Battle Birds podcast, you know, we we came up to the conclusion that uh, first half of the season or the majority of the season, we were only playing like eighteen percent man. We bumped it up to about thirty three percent man, and that's where you could throw the wrinkles and the blitzes and all that. So I'm going to be interested to see how Jonathan Gannon handles this, uh, this challenge of taking yep. on the goat. Um, but yep. to flip it over to the offensive side real quick, 
uh, we were a little beat up then too. Um, the Buccaneers were able to do whatever they want with their D line versus our offensive line. I think they, that we allowed a 54% pressure rate. So, I mean, any quarterback, let alone a young quarterback dealing with 54% pressure rate is going to be running around back there. Um, but when you look at it, Dallas Goddard wasn't there. He's probably our best blocking tight end. I think he goes really underrated when it comes to blocking. Lane Johnson wasn't there. And then because of Lane Johnson not being there, we moved Jordan Malata to the right inserted Andre Dillard so something that really worked for Tampa which was being able to get pressure with their front four and dropping back in coverage I think it's going to not be the same story when you got Mulatto on the left Lane on the right Dallas Goddard and so I think you know some of the offensive woes you know the fact that we elected to not run the ball as much and just Jalen's development and having a guy like Goddard who we've seen him go to time and time again down the stretch I think all that's going to be able to paying dividends and so it's hard to really talk yourself 100 in of eagles gonna win of course that's why vegas got them at eight and a half point underdogs but when you start factoring a little bit of this you know a little bit of that we getting some guys back they lost some guys and then you just see you know it, 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 no matter how, no matter if it's a different roster or not you, we still got that underdog mentality as a fan base and so you know well let's let's speak to that so the offense should be better I think they found their identity. They really didn't have an identity in week six. They were still just trying to figure all the pieces out. The offensive line is much better now than it was then because, look, as you said, Johnson was out. Mylotta was on the right side where he just isn't as comfortable. Dillard is not Mylotta on the left side. Jack Driscoll, I think, was at right guard. Mm -hmm. So the Eagles have a much more a con continuous group, a much more stable, on the same page front. Uh, having Goddard helps. Richard Rodgers is a good blocker. He'll help. Um, Jalen is a better quarterback in every facet of his game, in terms of recognition, in terms of decision-making, in terms of accuracy, running the football from the pocket. So, And the Eagles just have a lot more confidence running the football. So they're going to rely on the run. you got to stay You got to stay ahead of the sticks. You can. They, the Eagles were still, think about back then, still a lot of penalties, although they were starting to be reduced. Um so minimize your penalties, stay in front of the sticks, third and short situations. I think, Mike, fourth downs, you have to be aggressive. You have to be aggressive. You have to score touchdowns. You can't rely on field goals against this team because Tampa Bay is coming back the other way <laughs> with a very potent offense. So it's a great challenge for the Eagles. No, listen, we all go in knowing as much confidence as we have, how exciting it is. Eagles are still decided underdogs. And we're going to learn a lot about this team. This is going to be a great experience for everyone with the Philadelphia Eagles, okay, defensively to get a sense of just how far away this defense is. Great improvement, 10 games of 18 points or less. But within that, it's, you know, it's Garrett Gilbert and it's Trevor Simeon and it's it's uh, Jake, Jake Fromm Fromm. and it's all those guys. And so <laughs> this is this, where how good – how much – more does this defense need in the big picture? How ready are they to be a playoff defense? How ready is Jalen Hurst to be a playoff quarterback? Um, you know, all of these questions are going to be answered in part on Sunday. Yep, I agree. With that being said, that's pretty much for today's episode. Uh, shout out to everybody who's going to be watching this. Make sure you hit that like button. Subscribe if you are new. Definitely check out uh, Dave Spadaro's The Eagle Insider Podcast. Uh, great work there as well. And go birds, everybody, man. You're, we we appreciate your support. It's been a, a really fun season, interesting season. I hope every Eagles fan feels really good about where this team is now. And then, of course, in the spring, three first round draft picks, Mike, a, a bunch of picks in those first, you know, five rounds. Th this team has a chance to really build something sustainable and really special for years to come. And that's a credit to the Eagles organization. I got to give a shout out to Howie and. And his people and Jeffrey, Eagles were down in 2020. But as every team goes down, how quickly you get out of that that hole is the mark of a great organization. The Giants have had five losing seasons, 10 or more losses in five years, okay? <laughs> Eagles had one really, really bad year, and now we're back in the playoffs. So uh, this team is poised for really great things in years to come. But first, let's beat Tampa Bay on Sunday. Hey, I couldn't have said it better myself. I've definitely uh, gave fl uh, flowers to Howie throughout this season on my podcast, too, because I was definitely one of the ones down on him as well. But, I mean, 
I, I said this from the beginning that the Eagles are a team that just doesn't stay down long. Uh, we definitely sped up the retooling or rebuilding process because, you know, we, we, we advanced we a year ahead. Yeah. Transition. Yeah, that's right. Rebuilding <laughs> yeah, we, is a dirty word. Rebuilding is a dirty word in the NFL. It, it definitely is. So the transition was uh, exponentially sp sped up, um, and that's due to, like you said, a great organization uh, and, and just guys that, that know how to get it done. And it continues in the offseason. But until next time, let's beat Tampa. And as Dave said, go Birds. Go Birds. Thanks, Mike. Peace.